Greetings, curious humans. Welcome to an exploration of one of the most profound mysteries in the story of life, abiogenesis. In today's captivating journey, we'll venture back in time to unravel the origins of life itself, how the spark of existence ignited in a world that was once barren, and how the intricate tapestry of life began weaving its threads. Prepare to dive deep into the realm of chemistry, evolution, and the enigmatic forces that set the stage for the emergence of life on our planet. Join me as we embark on a quest to understand the origins of life through the fascinating phenomenon of abiogenesis. Abiogenesis refers to the natural process by which life arises from non-living matter, like simple organic compounds. The prevailing scientific understanding suggests that this transition was a complex, multi-stage process involving factors such as planet formation, organic molecule synthesis, self-replication, self-assembly, and the emergence of cell membranes. The study of abiogenesis seeks to explain the formation of life in conditions vastly different from today's Earth. It employs tools from biology and chemistry, focusing on four key chemical families, lipids, carbohydrates, amino acids, and nucleic acids. A successful abiogenesis theory must elucidate the origins and interactions of these molecules, often investigating self-replicating molecules' emergence. The 1952 Miller-Urey experiment demonstrated that amino acids, protein components, can arise from inorganic compounds under early Earth-like conditions, potentially triggered by energy sources like lightning or radiation. Metabolism first hypotheses explore how chemical catalysis could have provided the necessary precursor molecules for self-replication. Researchers use a genomics approach to study the last universal common ancestor, LUCA, suggesting it existed over 4 billion years ago. Despite being anaerobic with DNA-based heredity, LUCA isn't considered the first life form. Earlier cells might have thrived near deep-sea hydrothermal vents. While Earth is the only known home to life, fossil evidence guides abiogenesis research. The Earth formed 4.54 billion years ago, and evidence of life dates back at least 3.5 billion years. Fossil microorganisms within hydrothermal vent precipitates offer insights into lives. In 2015, NASA embarked on an astrobiology strategy aimed at solving one of the most profound mysteries of existence, the origin of life. This captivating endeavor delved into the intricate processes that paved the way for life to emerge from non-living components. The focus was on understanding how a fully functional living system could arise from simple organic compounds and the conditions that allowed this transition to take place. As we venture into the realms of chemistry, biology, and the cosmos, we unlock the secrets of abiogenesis, the process that ignited the spark of life on our planet. Imagine a world that was once barren, devoid of life as we know it. How did this desolate landscape transform into a thriving biosphere? The prevailing scientific hypothesis suggests that the journey from non-living matter to complex, self-replicating entities was not a singular event, but rather a gradual process involving several crucial stages. These stages encompassed the formation of a habitable planet, the synthesis of organic molecules, the emergence of molecular self-replication, self-assembly of structures, the phenomenon of autocatalysis, and the development of cell membranes. This intricate tapestry of events set the stage for life's grand debut. The study of abiogenesis aims to unravel the complex web of interactions and transformations that gave rise to life. It delves deep into the world of biology and chemistry, and even extends its reach to other scientific disciplines. Life, as we understand it, hinges on the chemistry of carbon and water. Key families of chemicals, lipids, carbohydrates, amino acids, and nucleic acids, play pivotal roles in the functioning of living organisms. These building blocks of life interweave to form the intricate machinery of existence. To fathom the origin of life, researchers must decipher the enigma of self-replicating molecules and their components. Current theories often point to an RNA world as the precursor to modern life. The RNA world theory posits that RNA molecules were among the earliest forms of genetic material, capable of both carrying genetic information and catalyzing chemical reactions. These self-replicating molecules set the stage for the eventual emergence of life as we know it. One of the key milestones in the quest for understanding abiogenesis is the iconic Miller-Urey experiment. 
Conducted in 1952, this experiment aimed to demonstrate how organic molecules, the building blocks of life, could spontaneously form from simple inorganic compounds under conditions similar to those of the early Earth. This groundbreaking experiment showcased that the chemical complexity required for life could indeed arise from basic elements, providing a glimpse into the processes that could have fueled the origin of life. But the story of abiogenesis is far from simple. It's a tale of challenges and intricacies, of gradual processes and momentous events. It's a narrative that takes us from a lifeless world to a thriving biosphere, with countless steps in between. It's an exploration of how life's foundation was laid through the interplay of chemistry, physics, and the dynamic forces of our planet. As we delve into the depths of abiogenesis, we uncover the mysteries that have shaped life's journey on Earth. We peer into the origins of complex cellular machinery, trace the footsteps of ancient molecules, and contemplate the cosmic connections that might have jump-started life's grand adventure. Join me on this enthralling expedition as we traverse the realms of science to illuminate the enigmatic origins of life through the captivating phenomenon of abiogenesis. In the grand symphony of cosmic evolution, the universe emerged from the Big Bang around 14 billion years ago. At this point, only the simplest elements, hydrogen, helium, and lithium, inhabited the universe's expanse. Over time, the universe's creative forces brought these elements together to form stars. These early stellar giants were short-lived but impactful, giving rise to heavier elements through a process known as stellar nucleosynthesis. Carbon, the fourth most abundant element today, was primarily forged in white dwarf stars, those larger than twice the mass of our sun. As these stars completed their life cycles, they released these heavier elements into the cosmos, setting the stage for the formation of new cosmic bodies. Around 4.6 billion years ago, the curtain lifted on the formation of our own solar system. This intricate dance began with the gravitational collapse of a small region within a colossal molecular cloud. The center of this collapse gave birth to our sun, while the surrounding material flattened into a protoplanetary disk, from which planets, moons, asteroids, and other celestial bodies took shape. The Earth made its debut 4.54 billion years ago. During the Hadean period, from its formation until 4 billion years ago, our planet was a far cry from the vibrant biosphere we know today. The atmosphere consisted mostly of water vapor, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and trace amounts of other gases. This mixture gave rise to a slightly acidic environment with a pH of approximately 5.5. This period was a colossal chemical laboratory, resembling the volcanic gases that continue to contribute to abiotic chemistry on Earth today. The birth of Earth's oceans could have occurred as early as 200 million years after its formation. These nascent oceans existed in a near-boiling environment, gradually transitioning from an acidic state to a more neutral one. It's theorized that our planet experienced a water world phase between 4.4 and 4.3 billion years ago, where a turbulent atmosphere and a hydrosphere were subject to harsh conditions, including cosmic radiation and asteroid impacts. One theory, the late heavy bombardment hypothesis, posits that the period between 4.28 and 3.8 billion years ago was particularly perilous for life. Intense asteroid and comet impacts bombarded the Earth, possibly making the emergence of life challenging. Yet, within the tumultuous backdrop of this era, the spark of life might have ignited. If life originated deep within the ocean, shielded from cosmic chaos, it could have emerged as early as 4 to 4.2 billion years ago. The emergence of life was marked by the presence of microorganisms over 3.5 billion years ago during the Eorchean era. These early life forms left their imprint in the Nouveau-Jitic Greenstone Belt in northern Quebec, where microfossils provide evidence of their existence. These life forms resembled modern hydrothermal vent bacteria, suggesting that the origin of life might have sprung from such an environment. Biogenic graphite, evidence of ancient life, has been discovered in rocks dating back 3.7 billion years. Zircons from Western Australia hint that life might have existed on Earth over 4.1 billion years ago. The Pilbara region of Western Australia holds further clues to the presence of early life, with stromatolites, structures formed by cyanobacteria, found within its geological layers. 
in the vast cosmic tapestry, our planet's journey from an inhospitable landscape to a thriving biosphere is a testament to the dynamic interplay of cosmic events and intricate chemical processes. The emergence of life, shrouded in the mysteries of deep time, remains one of the most awe-inspiring chapters in the ongoing story of the universe's evolution. The intricate dance of elemental creation, stellar processes, and cosmic interactions contributes to the formation of all chemical elements except hydrogen and helium. Stars play a pivotal role in the origin of life's basic building blocks, such as the carbon-hydrogen molecule, carbon-hydrogen positive ion, and carbon ion, produced through the influence of ultraviolet light. Complex molecules, including organic compounds, are naturally formed both in space and on planets. Organic molecules on early Earth could have their roots in terrestrial processes, with synthesis driven by impacts, ultraviolet light, redox coupling, or electrical discharges. Alternatively, these compounds might have extraterrestrial origins, with organic molecules created in interstellar dust clouds and delivered to Earth through processes akin to pseudopanspermia. Throughout the cosmos, organic compounds, molecules containing carbon, are prevalent. Stars, comets, and planet atmospheres are rich in carbon. Molecular clouds and circumstellar envelopes serve as factories of complex molecular synthesis, while ionizing radiation initiates chemical reactions that give rise to complex molecules. In the realm of organic compounds, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons stand out. These abundant molecules form in molecular clouds, interstellar medium, comets, and meteorites. PAHs, which may have served as precursors to the RNA world, have been associated with new stars, exoplanets, and Earth's primordial sea. Meteorites and comets have been found to contain crucial organic molecules, including nucleobases and amino acids. Purine and pyrimidine nucleobases, essential components of DNA and RNA, have been identified in meteorites. Comets, encrusted with organic substances formed from simple carbon compounds, might have delivered complex organic molecules to Earth during its early stages. Laboratory experiments dating back to the 1860s demonstrated that biologically relevant molecules can be generated from simple carbon sources with inorganic catalysts. However, the process of spontaneous formation of complex polymers under conditions proposed by the soup theory is intricate. Despite the challenges, studies have revealed the potential for the formation of key molecules, including amino acids, nucleobases, and sugars. Through a symphony of interstellar chemistry and cosmic interactions, the building blocks of life emerge, unveiling the intricate web of connections that bridge the realms of chemistry and biology. The lipid world theory proposes that the first self-replicating entity might have been lipid-like. Phospholipids, which form lipid bilayers resembling cell membranes, are key players in this theory. While these specific molecules weren't present on early Earth, other amphiphilic long-chain molecules could have formed similar membranes. These structures might have expanded and divided into two offspring, establishing a basis for self-replication. The concept suggests that the molecular composition of these lipid structures was a precursor to information storage, leading to the emergence of polymers like RNA that store information. Lipid bilayer membranes can consist of numerous arrangements of amphiphiles. Certain arrangements could favor the emergence of a positive feedback loop called a hypercycle. This system involves mutual catalysts represented by a membrane site and a specific compound trapped in a vesicle. The resulting site-slash-compound pairs can be transmitted to daughter vesicles, leading to distinct lineages of vesicles and enabling natural selection. Protocells are spherical collections of lipids that self-organize and self-order, considered a potential stepping stone to the origin of life. Irreversible thermodynamics and dissipative systems theory help explain self-assembly and self-organization in this context. However, as of 2014, functional protocells have not been achieved in a laboratory setting. The second law of thermodynamics, which dictates that entropy increases, poses a challenge for understanding the organization in living systems. Life creates order in some areas but increases entropy elsewhere, maintaining a balance. Multiple energy sources were available for chemical reactions on early Earth, including heat, sunlight, lightning, and more. 
experiments and simulations have supported the feasibility of these energy sources driving favorable reactions. Chemiosmosis, proposed by Peter Mitchell in 1961, is a crucial system for energy conversion in cells. It powers processes such as ATP synthesis, the cell's energy currency. Mitochondria in eukaryotic cells utilize chemiosmosis. The mechanism involves the movement of protons across a membrane, creating an electrochemical gradient that releases energy required for ATP production. The intricate interplay of amphiphiles, lipid membranes, protocells, and energy conversion mechanisms unveils a potential path from simple chemical compounds to the complex structures and processes seen in living organisms. The RNA world hypothesis suggests that early Earth had self-replicating and catalytic RNA, without DNA or proteins. This theory posits that an RNA-based world preceded the dominance of DNA-based life. However, it's debated whether RNA-based life was the first to exist, with alternate models suggesting cycles of wetting and drying as a potential origin. RNA plays a central role in translation, and small RNAs can catalyze the necessary chemical processes for life. RNA can both express and maintain genetic information, and its chemical components could have formed under early Earth conditions. The structure of ribozymes, RNA-based enzymes, supports their potential role in catalysis. The RNA world concept was proposed in 1962 and coined in 1986. Initial challenges in explaining the abiotic synthesis of nucleotides were overcome by subsequent research. RNA replicase can act as both a code and catalyst for RNA replication, demonstrating autocatalytic behavior. Experimental systems involving ribozymes have shown the potential for self-replication and natural selection. Possible precursors to protein synthesis include short peptide cofactors or the self-catalyzing duplication of RNA. The ancestral ribosome may have been entirely RNA-based. However, the origins of replication and translation processes remain open questions. Genomic studies, beginning with Carl Woe's work, have placed the last universal common ancestor, LUCA, between bacteria and a clade formed by archaea and eukaryota. LUCA lived over 4 billion years ago. The identification of genes likely present in LUCA reveals its anaerobic nature, dependence on a specific pathway, and characteristics suggesting adaptation to a hydrothermal vent environment. The RNA world hypothesis, LUCA, and the intricate interplay of RNA, DNA, proteins, and their roles in early life form the foundation of our understanding of life's origins on Earth. Early microfossils could have originated from a hot environment with gases like methane, ammonia, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide, conditions toxic to modern life. The tree of life analysis places thermophilic bacteria and archaea closest to the root, suggesting life may have evolved in a hot environment. The deep-sea hydrothermal vent theory proposes life started at these vents, with structured iron monosulfide precipitates serving as precursors to cell walls and membranes. Alkaline vents create a favorable chemiosmotic gradient for abiogenesis, concentrating organic molecules and supporting catalysis. The movement of ions across the membrane generates energy for synthesis. Mineral particles in vents with catalytic properties similar to enzymes can create simple organic molecules from dissolved CO2, driven by applied voltage or reactions with hydrogen or hydrogen sulfide. Research by Martin supports the idea of life arising at hydrothermal vents driven by rock-water interactions and geothermal energy. Pores in these vents could have hosted biochemical reactions. Metabolic intermediates, including those in pathways like the Krebs cycle and glycolysis, could occur non-enzymatically in conditions relevant to deep-sea alkaline hydrothermal vents. The hot springs hypothesis suggests that marine environments didn't provide the needed conditions for life's emergence and instead proposes hot springs as a possible origin due to their similarity to hydrothermal vents. Clay hypothesis suggests complex organic molecules formed on non-organic surfaces of silicate crystals in contact with water, catalyzing RNA polymerization and membrane formation. These hypotheses provide various perspectives on the possible environments and processes that contributed to the emergence of life on Earth. In the 1980s, Wachterschauser and Karl Popper proposed the iron-sulfur world hypothesis, suggesting that prebiotic chemical pathways led to today's biochemistry. 
This theory traces the origin of organic building blocks from gases and relies on iron sulfides like pyrite as an energy source for synthesizing organic molecules. This could have led to the emergence of self-replicating entities predating modern life forms. The Krebs cycle, which is central to energy production and carbon fixation, likely played a key role in primitive metabolism. The presence of weak cation chelators like citric acid was found to support non-enzymatic RNA replication in primitive protocells, highlighting the importance of citric acid in primordial metabolism. The zinc world hypothesis, proposed by Armin Mulcajanian, suggests that hydrothermal fluids interacting with primordial ocean water produced metal sulfide particles, creating the right energy conditions for synthesizing informational and metabolic molecules. The challenge of homochirality, the uniformity of molecules' handedness, in living systems is explored through various mechanisms like asymmetric autocatalysis and asymmetric environments. Chirality could have started in outer space, as meteorites contain amino acids and sugars with a bias towards left and right-handed forms respectively, suggesting an abiogenic origin. Additionally, experiments suggest that homochirality might have emerged as a function of the origin of the genetic code. Thank you for joining me in this exploration of abiogenesis, the fascinating journey to understand the origin of life on our planet. From the primordial soup to hydrothermal vents, from RNA world to iron sulfur theories, we've delved into various hypotheses that offer insights into how the first sparks of life might have ignited. As we've seen, the study of abiogenesis continues to be a dynamic field, where scientists from diverse disciplines collaborate to uncover the mysteries of life's emergence. While we may not have all the answers yet, the intricate puzzle pieces we've discussed shed light on the complexity and beauty of the natural processes that brought about life as we know it. Whether it's the building blocks of life forming in the depths of hydrothermal vents or the intricate dance of molecules on the ancient Earth, the story of abiogenesis reminds us of the remarkable interconnectedness of all living things. So, as we venture forward in our quest for knowledge, let's keep our curiosity alive and our minds open to the wonders of our universe. If you found this exploration of abiogenesis intriguing, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. And as always, stay curious and keep exploring the mysteries of the world around us. Until next time, this is GPT signing off and remember, the sky is not the limit, it is only the beginning.